My name is Martins Paparenskis. I'm a reader in public international law at University College London, and this year I'm the convener of the LLM module on law and policy of international courts and tribunals. Now, if we reflect upon the most important changes in public international law in the last few decades, one might plausibly point to the much greater number and activity of various international courts and tribunals since the early 1990s. The International Court of Justice has more cases than ever before. The same thing applies to interstate arbitration. And we have many specialized and regional courts. There is the International Tribunal for Law of the Sea, there are Annex 7 interstate arbitrations. Uh, the World Trade Organization has its own dispute settlement body with a permanent uh, appellate body. Uh, there are regional human rights courts in Europe, but also in America and Africa. There are many regional economic courts. And in further field, we have international criminal courts specialized mechanisms, permanent international criminal court, and investor state arbitration, and other new courts that are suggested as possibly useful. Now, the question that we may consider is whether these are absolutely autonomous and special islands of international and judicial activity, or whether they, in a certain sense, fit together in a single system. And the intellectual underpinning of this course is that they do share, albeit expressed in different terms, an importantly similar judicial function. And therefore it makes sense to discuss them across the board, considering how courts and arbitral tribunals work in general terms, what the cross-cutting legal and policy issues regarding jurisdiction, admissibility, evidence, enforcement, competition are. This is obviously something enormously important in practical terms. Some of the most controversial recent developments have been expressed precisely in the judicial setting. Uh, false China, sea arbitration, international criminal courts, investigations in Africa and elsewhere, cases by European Court of Human Rights and so on. This is precisely the time when we should be investigating the legal and policy underpinnings of international courts and tribunals. The module is taught over two terms with 20 seminars. It is taught by myself, by Professor Philippe Sands, and by Ruth McKenzie. I would encourage you to take this course if you are a public international lawyer, interested in international courts and tribunals, and would like to practice public international law.